Greetings. In this video, we will be looking at the word-to-word -word meaning and commentary on the Karnapati Upanishad of the Atharva Veda. So this is going to be in parts as it is a very long discourse or rather an explanation. So in this video, I will be only speaking on the introduction on this Upanishad. So the Karnapati Upanishad is from the Atharva Veda. Now before dwelling into the Upanishad itself, we have to understand the origin of the Vedas because the Upanishad itself is part of the Vedas. So let's get back to the genesis and the classification of the Vedas across the timeline of history and finally the origin or rather the significance or an introduction to the Karnapati Upanishad before we go into the meanings and commentary. So the Vedas, the Vedas to put it in simple terms are a collection of cosmic knowledge which were downloaded by advanced beings of our culture. Now the entire creation is an amalgamation of reverberation. The entire cosmos in its geometry, in its core structure is made up of reverberation, vibration. So in other words, the entire universe is simply reverberation. When there is reverberation, there is sound. Sound is the very form of vibration. So, the ancient sages, through their intense penance, activated their non-mechanical parts of the brains, which enabled them to directly tap into the cosmic archive and download any form of knowledge or information. So, in this state, the rishis downloaded and experienced various truths of the cosmos, which they heard as sounds. As said, since the entire reverberation is an amalgamation of sound energy, every data, every form of knowledge of the entire cosmos, the entire creation, is in the form of sound energy. So, they tapped into this knowledge and heard these truths as sounds, which we refer to as mantras. And they experienced these truths with their entire being. We poetically refer to this as the rishis heard and realized the Vedas through their hearts. So as they downloaded all this information in the form of sounds, so many rishis, many sages downloaded various portions of the cosmic knowledge and that gave rise to an ocean of knowledge which was the Vedas initially. Now this is why the Vedas are also termed as Shruti, literally meaning that which was heard because substantially these Vedas were received in the form of sounds which were heard. And the sounds which were heard by the Rishis had some patterns, had some characteristics. And that is why the Vedas are taught through recitation with specific rules in regards to their pronunciations, intonations and meters. Because these characteristics resemble the sound pattern which were received by the sages. And only by reproducing the sounds through recitation and meditation upon it can we connect to the same frequency of the cosmic archive and realize the particular truth. This is why Vedas are learned through recitation and meditation upon it. Now, as time passed, there, were an, there was an ocean of Vedas. Many beings contributed, downloaded, 
and gave rise to various forms of knowledge. So at one point of time, Veda Vyasa, as the compiler of the Vedas, classified the ocean into divisions to facilitate the organization. Now it is just like how we have science as a subject, but we can branch it into chemistry, biology and physics to simplify or facilitate things. So Veda Vyasa classified the Vedas and divided the Vedas in accordance to their nature. So the Vedas were, which were in the form of mantras, which were in particular lengths, which we refer to as the meters, were all grouped and they were bucketed into what we call as the Rig Veda. Essentially because all these forms of Veda mantras, the verses of the Vedas which appear as a meter, a mantric meter which we refer to as a Rig. Right? So since we referred to these verses as Rigs, they were classified and this classification was given the term Rig Veda. Now the form of knowledge which was re in relation to Yaga or sacrifice was were grouped into the Yajur Veda. The Yajur Veda itself later on split into Krishna Yajur Veda and Shukla Yajur Veda. Now there's a long story to it which we will not touch here. And then the Rig Veda itself sung in a particular fashion, sung in a strict Vedic fashion, was grouped into Sama Veda. Sama Veda is essentially Rig Veda, just that it is recited in a sing song fashion. Now, the fourth group, which we refer to as the Atharva Veda, buckets the form of knowledge which does not fall into any of the previous three categories. So this um, involves um, a huge aspect like magic, um, uh, the method to construct an instrument and so forth. So all these forms of knowledge were put into Atharva Veda. Now further, the Vedas themselves were classified into Samhita, Brahmana, Aranyaka and Upanishads. Samhita refers to the Mantra Bhaga, meaning the original text, so as to say. Samhita refers to the original text, which is in the form of a Mantric Bhaga, which are in verses which are in a mantric form. So they are referred to as the original, the, the basic form of knowledge. And then the Brahmana are the form of knowledge, the part of the Vedas, which give commentaries on the Samhita portion. So as to say, ritualistic explanation. The Brahmana portion gives explanations or commentary on the Samhita. And then the Aranyaka refers to the Vedas which were traditionally learned in the forest region in seclusion. So these were termed, these were called Aranyakam. And then finally we have the Upanishads which form the essence of the Vedas. They are like the distillate, the essence of the Vedas. So these were like the end portion or the PhD portion of the Vedas. Now, the Rushis who downloaded the Vedas are not entirely known. For example, the Rushis for the portion of the Vedas which come under the Aranyakam are not known. Whereas the portion of the Vedas which come under the Samhita are known. So like this, there were many Rushis. Some of them are famous figures who occur across the scriptures. Some of them are not known. So like this, we have many Rishis, both males and females, who have downloaded various portions of the Vedas. Now further, 
each of the Vedas, each of the Rig, Yajur, Sama and Atharva Vedas were branched into shakhas or branches. So each branch contained a particular portion of the Vedas. So traditionally, each family only adhered themselves to one shakha of a particular Veda. For example, a particular family may be only learning one branch of the Krishna Yajur Veda. To put an example, like this there were many branches. A lot of these branches are lost today. So this was the branching was to facilitate the learning of the Vedas. So that is an overall view, a brief view on the genesis of the Vedas. Now coming to Ganapati Upanishad or what we refer to as the Ganapati Atharva Shirusham, this is an Upanishad which belongs to the Atharva Veda. Now the Ganapati Upanishad very interestingly belongs to an extinct branch or an extinct shakha of the Atharva Veda. As mentioned earlier, with the classification of the Vedas, there were many branches within one Veda itself. And this Upanishad belongs to one such branch which is extinct. There are many branches which are extinct. And this Ganapati Upanishad is an example of an Upanishad which belongs to an extinct branch. It Now you may ask, so if it's extinct, then how do we know or how do we have access to this Upanishad? Well, this Ganapati Upanishad was rediscovered as a manuscript some 40 to 50 years back. So the original way of learning, which means recitation, Veda learning literally means Vedic recitation. So the original way to recite this Ganapati Upanishad is not known. And that is why we have more than 20 versions of this Atharva Shirusham. There are 20 or more variations or the ways in which this Upanishad is recited. Each version has its own unique svaras and even words which are different. So that is an introduction. So the Rishi who downloaded, who received this Upanishad is the sage Ganaka. Now, this Upanishad is commonly referred to as the Ganapati Atharva Shirusham. So Ganapati comes from Gana and Patihi, which means the Lord of the Gana. Gana literally means group. A group of what? Unspecified. But as per various traditions and school of Vedic schools, we have some commentaries on this. So one commonly known Ganapati, the Lord of the attendance of Lord Shiva. As we know, Lord Vinayaka has Ganapati. Next, the word Gana itself refers to a group of sound-based knowledge. So a group of cosmic knowledge in the form of sounds is literally the Vedas. So Ganapati can also mean the Lord of the Vedas. And this is also why a prayer to Lord Ganapati is done prior to the study or recitation of the Vedas. Atharva, meaning not shivering or steady, firm. Atharva itself is the essence of this Upanishad. Because this Upanishad is centralized on the Muladhara Chakra which confers steadiness and stability in life. Muladhara chakra is the root chakra, the base chakra. And once you have mastered it, you become unshakable. And that is what Atharva stands for. Shirusha, which means head. So as we can know, Karnapati Atharva Shirusha. So the head, the controller, so as to say, the domain of the Upanishad. So, Karnapati Atharva Shirusham, which is the Karnapati Upanishad. So, that's 
the introduction and in the next video we will be starting off with the shanti patha which is recited before the commencement of the upanishad now what is this shanti patha and why is it recited the significance all these details will be explained in the next video thank you for watching